On today's show, Faraday Future loses two of its most important executives, including a co-founder who now says the company is effectively insolvent, Tesla finally makes its parts catalogue available for members of the public to view, and how you could own your very own miniature Starman Tesla, or read about the adventures of Starman in a comic as well. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We're 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Hi there, folks. Happy Sunday. It's been another busy week here in the world of clean cars and energy, and I've got some cracking stories to share, so let's get on with it. Faraday Future co-founder Nick Sampson, whose previous employers have included Jaguar Land Rover, Lotus and Tesla, has called it a day at the Chinese-backed automaker. In a letter that was leaked to the press, Sampson said the company was effectively insolvent and he couldn't continue at the company, knowing the impact its recent employee furloughing was having on their families and the community. Sampson's resignation makes him the second of three co-founders to hand in the resignation notice, and came the day after former EV1 chief engineer Peter Savagan, who was also senior VP of product and technology development at the company, walked out. It seems there's very little future left for Faraday Future. After years of resisting calls by owners and enthusiasts to make it easier for third parties to service and repair its cars, Tesla has finally published Model S, Model X and Model 3 vehicle parts catalogues online. Anyone can now browse the database and obtain part numbers for replacement parts. But while this is a fantastic win for right-to-repair enthusiasts, it's only a partial win. Not all of the parts will be readily available to DIY repairers, with some only available to order if you're an authorised repair centre. Back in June this year, Ford and Volkswagen announced that they would be working together in the future on commercial vehicle technology, pooling resources with a view to developing shared platforms. But now it appears that the two automakers might be going to do the same thing with EVs, with Ford's CFO Frank Witter calling a potential partnership on electric vehicles theoretically possible. Although Ford and Volkswagen have both promised us brand new plug-in vehicles in the near future, neither have really got much to show for it, so a partnership could certainly help make up for that relative lack of plug-in models so far. Tesla is promising we'll see a new update to its advanced autopilot system in around six weeks, adding a new, more advanced, smart summon feature that will make it possible for owners to literally summon their cars to meet them when they happen to be parked in a parking lot, and according to Elon Musk, drive it like a big remote-controlled car if the car is in sight. The next generation of Tesla's summon feature, due next year, will also be able to find parking spots and follow instructional signs like speed limits, Already, one Model X owner is using Summon to shuffle his car between parking spots from his office to avoid parking tickets. It's cute, but please don't do it on the public highway. Volvo and Baidu might seem like unlikely bedfellows, but the two companies have announced a big partnership this week that will see them work together to develop fully autonomous EVs. Volvo, of course, already has extensive experience in autonomous vehicle development, and while you might think of Baidu as a Chinese internet company, it too has been working on developing its own self-driving cars for some time. The end goal? Producing level 4 autonomous vehicles that can be used for car sharing and taxi services. Following an earlier recall this year for the Kia Niro Hybrid and Plug-in Hybrid models, Hyundai has announced a recall of the Ionic Hybrid and Plug-in Hybrid to fix the very same issue, drive system relays which could overheat and cause a fire. The Niro and Ionic share a common platform which explains why the two cars have the same recall problems. As with the previous recall, owners will be contacted by November 30th to arrange for an appropriate recall work to be carried out on their cars free of charge. Interestingly, the recall doesn't appear to affect the all-electric Ionic EV. It may have told US customers that they needed to order their cars by the middle of October to ensure delivery by the end of the year to take full advantage of the 7500 US dollar federal tax credit for EVs, but now Tesla has told those who want a Tesla Model 3 mid-range that if they order their car in the next few days, they should get it well before the end of this year. Deliveries of mid-range Model 3s are already in full swing, and it seems Tesla is prioritizing mid-range orders to ensure that it meets that deadline, under-promising and over-delivering when it comes to order lead times. 
following an earlier regulatory change that made it possible for companies to apply to test fully driverless cars on the road of California, Alphabet's autonomous car division, Waymo, has just become the first company to receive approval to test driverless cars on the roads of the Golden State. Leveraging its experiences in Arizona, where regulations are less stringent, Waymo says it will initially be testing its driverless cars in the southern San Francisco Bay Area, with remote operators supervising test cars and taking over control if required at all times via remote link. We really are living in the future. Future, folks. With the new Formula E season underway, fans all over the world are eager to find out how they can watch the races live. And some TV stations and cable companies are already securing exclusive deals with the FIA approved race series to show coverage. Now we've learned that YouTube has signed a deal with Formula E to live stream each and every race to British fans over YouTube. Sadly, it looks like other deals with other broadcasters means you won't be able to view the races on YouTube around the world but here's hoping that will change at some point in the near future. Nearly half of the world's electric vehicles are found in just 25 cities, and 98% of the global electric vehicle markets are found in China, Europe, Japan, and the US. Now that's according to the International Council on Clean Transportation, which published its latest report into electric car adoption this week. Noting that the EV market is accelerating and that cities and countries with the highest adoption rates have the best incentives, the organization said a comprehensive policy package is necessary around the world to properly launch the EV market. That includes appropriate infrastructure, which it says only the 10 top electric car markets are currently anywhere near to solving with sufficient charging provision. For the rest of the world, well, it's a long, long way behind. BMW has announced a mid-double-digit million euro investment into revamping its Dingolfeng production facilities in Bavaria, Germany, so that it can expand electric vehicle battery and drivetrain production ahead of next year's production debut of the 2019 Mini E. Joking that the Mini E will have English apparel and a Bavarian heart, BMW will produce the Mini E itself at the same Oxford production facility as the rest of the Mini family, and should offer next-generation battery range while retaining the standard mini styling. And finally, remember Starman, the spacesuit wearing pilot of Elon Musk's personal Tesla Roadster that was sent into space by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket as part of a payload test? Well, now Hot Wheels has chosen to immortalize Spaceman by producing its own limited edition Spaceman Tesla Roadster for you to buy, right in time for the holidays. At the same point, and completely unrelated to Hot Wheels, there's a new comic that launched this week called The Adventures of Starman, which, as it turns out, is another goodbye for any would-be Tesla SpaceX fan with a nerdy heart. Fantastic. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, tell your friends about the show, and if you've got some feedback, you know what to do. In the meantime, I hope the rest of your weekend goes well and that you have a great week and I'll see you at the end of next week. You can find out when we upload new Ecotech goodness by hitting the bell right below. And while you're at it, don't forget to switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. Do your bit and help keep emissions as low as possible by getting your electrons free of those nasty greenhouse gases. I'll be back soon with more news round updates, but I'm going to be out of the office for a few days. And so next Sunday's show may miss some of the breaking news stories that happens towards the end of this coming week. I hope you'll still enjoy the show, though. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.